innovative trends to innovative solutions to what Dineve uh, offers to make a difference in the selling ecosystem. But this one specifically holds a soft corner for me and I'm really looking forward to a very, very exciting discussion today. Before we begin, let me share a quick introduction of the wonderful company I represent. Dineb is a sales enablement Indian born MNC that's been in business for over 21 years now. As a sales catalyst, the company has been working with clients on improving their sales output. What this means is we ensure that sales happen, thereby making our contribution to the economy, whether in terms of uh, uh, GDP or in terms of the employment we offer across our delivery centers. So that is about us. Moving on with today's agenda, the audience that is gathered here today, we've all witnessed, um, you know, the same method of education. Schools have always been synonymous with classroom teaching, one that we never imagined would ever change and that too overnight. This virtual gear shift has been um, very, very interesting to watch. And with that, I introduce the topic of today's webinar, Digital Transformation of India's Education System. Very happy to introduce the esteemed panelists for today, Dr. Shalini Adwani, Director Pathway School, and Mr. Shailendra Katyal, Executive Director, Consumer Business Lenovo, who have been kind enough to join us for sharing their uh, thoughts on how education and technology can partner in carving the future path for our children. Let me also share their quick introduction. Dr. Shalini Advani is a founder director of Pathway School Noida. Previously, she's been principal of the British School, New Delhi, and director education of Learn Today. She's advised on the setup of new schools and has conducted multiple teacher trainings till date. She has a special interest in how technology can promote effective learning for each child. Thank you, Dr. Advani, for joining us today. May I kindly request you to switch on your camera and say a quick hello to the audience. Thank you very much, Ubra. It's very nice to be here, especially on an important uh, topic like this one. Yes, really looking forward to it. And with that, let me also introduce our next panelist. Uh, Mr. Shailendra Katyal is the Executive Director and India PCSD Consumer Leader for Lenovo, the world's largest PC maker and an emerging PC Plus leader. He comes with over two decades of experience in building consumer-focused businesses in India and South Asia, across mass market traditional FMCG businesses, as well as new age businesses in consumer technology and e-commerce. Thanks a lot, Shailendra, for joining us today. May I now request you to kindly switch on your camera and say a quick hello. Hey, hi, everyone. Really happy to be here. And thanks, Dinev team, for inviting me on this panel. We are very thrilled to have both of you on the panel today. Uh, and now, uh, without any further ado, let me quickly introduce the moderators for the day. Mani Bhatia spearheads the global transition and quality charter at Dinev and is responsible for making things move from concept to implementation. Uh, of course, not a simple job in any manner. And I couldn't have asked for a better co-moderator today. So thank you, Mani. Thanks for joining us. Thank you, Shubra. A warm welcome to both our panelists and a warm welcome to all the attendees for this webinar. Wonderful. Now, I have been speaking for a bit now, so obviously I also deserve a little bit of introduction. Uh, my name is Shubhra Sinha. I uh, lead the marketing uh, uh, function at Dineb and uh, passionate about everything new and disruptive. Uh, my job in simple terms is that of weaving stories creatively. Yeah, so that's, that's me. Uh, and to the amazing bunch of audience whom we have here, allow me to guide you a bit on how to ensure the best and the most interactive experience of this webinar. Through the discussion, if you have any questions, uh, there is a hand raise button uh, that you can press and someone from the team will attend to you. Uh, you can also type your question in the Q&A section and uh, we are collating all those questions and uh, you know, the team is uh, uh, doing a great back end job and we will be taking them up in the scheduled Q&A slot at the end. Um, 
and uh, yeah like i said any questions anything you can uh, just write it in the q and a section or in the chat section and there is a hand raise button now without any further ado let's get started although on a lighter note now these cartoon strips uh, when we looked at them uh, we felt they are definitely amusing but uh, i think more than amusing they are very very relevant uh, and they do raise a lot of questions uh, we all would agree that there's a paradigm shift that has occurred one that's not been about a country or a city or a geography it's there's been a global impact you know everyone has gotten affected with it a shift that has changed our lives almost overnight and changed the way we we interacting socially the ch changed the way we are working the ch and changed the way we are learning uh, you know even like this uh, uh, you know everything is almost changed and and yeah necessity as they say is the mother of invention so uh, the evolution of education sector stemming from necessity has seen some other level of innovation and i am i'm very sure about saying this that you know technology has been a great partner in ensuring and enabling the education sector to actually able to surpass these challenges and uh, emerge rightfully as a winner of course uh, when change occurs uh, sentiments do get divided um, what you see here on the screen is just a reflection of the varied opinions that are floating you know there there is a segment of the audience that feels that this is the present and perhaps the most effective way of learning in, in the present times where is this another segment that feels that this is not sustainable you know there there are many uh, drawbacks to this model of learning um, all of us here are on you know one side of the table whoever is present in this panel today uh, and in the as attendees today we are all on one side of the table the ones on the other side of the table are actually the children uh, for whom life and the entire you know the essence of learning has uh, changed dramatically having said that we are all cognizant of the times that we are living in uh, the worth of digital connect the focus on improving skill sets the need to relook at the syllabus design um, the 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 focus on teacher enablement there's merit in each of these what surpasses all of this perhaps uh, is the need to innovate stay relevant and most importantly you know stay interesting how do you stay interesting in these times uh google's focus to provide blended learning experience offering a free a range of free tools facebook's initiative to launch a curriculum focused on digital safety geo launching geo glasses to be able to conduct holographic uh, classrooms uh, the opportunities that are being created are obviously many of course it depends on how well we leverage these and how we create the right balance on that note here is a quick video i want to showcase which is trending across social media and news channels and um, i think a, a full credit to the news minute uh, for putting up this video uh, but it's a beautiful video that shows how um, technology and uh, you know the, how the amalgamation of technology in education can create absolute wonders so here it is for you guys In the middle of a classroom in Malappuram, Kerala, an elephant appears next to a teacher. One, two, three. The Moorkanada AMAUP school is experimenting with augmented reality during their virtual classes. This is the LKG class of the school. It's not just elephants. In class 6, a Hindi teacher stands next to a cow as she explains what a guide is. For class 5 students of social sciences, an artificially created solar system revolves in the classroom. You know, Shyam, a teacher at the school, is behind this new development. Speaker P Shivarama Krishnan and film director Lal Jose have appreciated the school for its efforts. Augmented reality system of virtual classes are very complicated. Wow, isn't that wonderful? I would just love to be sitting in one of these classrooms. any time uh oh, just... 
On this note, I would like to welcome our first speaker, Dr. Shalini Advani. As an educator herself, it would be interesting to learn what's going behind the curtains to keep the show going, and as well as uh, you know how she foresees the future as well as the opportunities. Over to you, Dr. Advani. Thank you, uh, thank you very much, Ubra. Um, let me begin just by sharing my screen. Uh, if you can just enable screen sharing. Shubra, I think that you do need to do that. Sure, it should be enabled anytime now. The team's just... Okay, yeah. Okay, so, you know, this title, this topic is such a perfect one for the moment because we are talking, whether we like it or not, about a digital transformation that has happened. And this transformation has happened in a sort of often desperate, in an uneven kind of way. And I think that one of the, the things that it caused was to really lay bare the huge disparities of our society. The kind of digital divide is a reflection of many other divides that we have talked about uh, for a long time. <clears throat> and I must say that, you know, that people have tried to get around this in so many ways. There were some schools, there were some educational uh, institutions that had the benefit of children having access to a device, reasonable broadband. But then there were children also trying to access lessons on a cell phone, on television, on radio. There was an element of jugar that everybody who was involved with education did. Uh, and that was really necessary. Governments did this, state governments supported this. There were cases where people were broadcasting on a loudspeaker in a village. Uh, all of these sorts of things at one level really showed the hunger for education, the hunger for learning, which runs very, very deep at every level in our society. For schools that did have access to a device, <clears throat> it was a whole process of working out the architecture as a first uh, phase. You know, were they going to use Microsoft Teams? Were they going to use Zoom or Google Meet? How much of it was going to be synchronous and online? How much was going to be asynchronous? Some schools did almost nothing as an online, but they did send worksheets and toolkits home to children. So there was a whole sort of variety in that focus of how to manage. In all of this, as we know, teachers have been absolutely heroic. And uh, they scrambled with managing a whole difficult process and trying to adapt to it with so much care, with so much passion and interest that it was really a, a really remarkable thing that won a lot of recognition from, I think, everybody. I think this is one time that the value of teachers has become increasingly recognized over this whole COVID time. We're now really moving to a different phase. And I think for everybody, it's important to recognize that we are now on a different planet. Now, why am I saying that? That initially, there was a good amount of vibrancy and energy just because of newness. And uh, even children were tuned in to this whole new way of learning and willing to give it a try. And so were teachers, despite the huge challenge that this placed on them. We now really got to look at moving on to phase two. Because now this online learning, unfortunately, is really going to be a new normal. And that is something that we are going to have to accept. Uh, there is a long-term element of this. And we need to create expertise. Um, we need to look at what 
is the best way of bringing about learning in this new normal. In some senses, there's almost an irony that this has forced us to re-question what it is that education should be about. It's forcing us to look at some of the developments, some of the changes that we have all known our education system needs to bring in, and those are being forced upon us. Um, some of the nuts and bolts of this. Uh, we're looking at the whole issue of student expectations and motivation. It's important to really recognize that what we've moved now is into a phase where we don't just take the physical classroom and move it online. That happened in April and May. But what is uh, being required now is a whole different pedagogy. And there is a whole different requirement of what we need to look at if we are going to succeed in educating our children. For one thing, uh, we are foregrounding meeting the emotional needs of children. There is, they're surrounded by this whole atmosphere of danger and disease. And uh, they carry that. They may not show that, but that insecurity is there with them. So certainly one part of it is that every teacher is going to need to be a counselor and recognize stress and recognize what they can do about it. Now, what does school mean to a child? It really doesn't, when you think as an audience of what were the highlights of your school life, it wasn't the day you learned to solve quadratic equations, isn't it? School memories are full of events, activities, uh, times of happiness. And so as we have moved school online, this is really what we need to try as far as possible to replicate. Children look for friendships. They look for sharing ideas and experiences. So what are the kinds of experiences? For instance, now co-curricular, what we call co-curricular activities have to move to the heart of school. Uh, I'd say that, you know, you need to have things like into house quizzes or photography competitions or debates. These are all things that can happen on, online. Older children interacting with reading to or teaching younger children. Or we've had things in our school of like parent and child math games and math activities where families come together to learn online. Our children have done fundraisers for uh, causes, particularly when there was that whole the height of the migrant crisis, children need to come together to engage with their world around. As teachers, what are you doing to recognize your children? There's a lot of capacity for things like online recognition badges. So praise, recognition, all of these things have become very important in terms of meeting emotional needs. And along with that, also the activities that have become even more important for physical needs. Uh, some exercises and stretches, eye resting exercises, ensuring that there are dance classes online or yoga, all of these, both emotional and physical needs have become very, very important. Moreover, learning is a social activity, isn't it? That's the difference between being in a school and going to a one-on-one -on -one tuition class. Uh, that whole collaborative aspect uh, is very important. We have to move away from a teacher-centered class now, and we need to use uh, strategies for collaborative work. There are a lot of very wonderful apps that allow that, things like Pali or, you know, children working together on a single Google Doc or a Google Slide or sharing their answers or their experiences on Flipgrid, uh, listening to each other, online projects. All of these aspects of learning have become 
very, very important. And we need to move also from a teacher-centered, content-centered program, one where we are sort of dumping content into their minds, to ensuring the development of a kind of enduring understanding. Now, for all of this, teachers need to very regularly give feedback to children, not just in that quarterly test, etc., but regularly in every second or third class. If you're teaching a micro concept, how are you going to give feedback? Uh, some of those are things that are simple activities. A Kahoot quiz, for instance, is a lovely way of doing this. Or you have another program called Edpuzzle, which some of you may know, uh, where you have a video which is periodically paused and students write out their answers to that. Nearpod gives you immediate feedback as do, as do things like Google Forms. Um, all of these are strategies that, that teachers have to be able to use. Instead of the teacher teaching everything, how can you have student agency where children are able to lead the learning themselves, maybe dividing up some of the leading of the content where children have read a little bit and they're sharing that themselves with each other. In all of these ways, teachers, I think, have got to be used to uh, surrendering a little bit of the control that we are normally used to having in the classroom. Uh, we should not forget the particular learning requirements of children with special needs, you know, children with dyslexia, or dysgraphia, or slow learners. And of course, there are, again, a lot of facilities. Google's got Google Assistant or Google Docs with voice typing. For those sorts of features, I think it's really important to look to see how we can support uh, different types of children, different types of learning needs. I think this is, uh, my first line is a really important idea, particularly because we have uh, a Lenovo representative also on the panel. Uh, for all the, the huge value that big business has brought to technology and to learning enablement, some of the most dramatic changes, uh, some of the most dramatic innovations have come from small social groups, like teachers, for example. Uh, and I think it's important to look at uh, the progression of what technological uh, development and technological support has meant for education in remembering that. Um, some of the, the opportunities that we have with online is to really individualize learning needs. Uh, the whole aspect of self-paced learning, asynchronous learning, where you give chunks of work to children and they're able to get on with doing it themselves. Uh, when young people are able to decide whether I want to work on this first or that first, how much time I need, all the research worldwide is showing it's leading to very deep learning. And uh, we need to look at how we are to support that. Now, how do we support individualized learning? If you're saying not everybody comes with the same skills into the classroom, we've always known that. There are children who are more advanced and, and others who are less. Uh, certain strategies, uh, for instance, a teacher who is teaching a concept assumes, say a concept in maths, assumes you have a certain pre-knowledge before that concept. But actually, not every child is absolutely clear about that pre-knowledge. So if a teacher creates a video tutorial, you can do that on your computer. Uh, there's also a program called Screencastify, which allows you to look at projecting your presentation and having your voice. And so you create a, a library of tutorials. And what happens is that a child who's not quite sure of a concept 
can go back and listen to that earlier, or you can have a reteaching concept through that. It's like creating a sort of private Khan Academy, if you like. And that really supports the learning that children can do. So all the student agency, self-directed learning has become foregrounded with online learning. We've also got access to global outreach and global resources. There is, uh, you know, Google Earth. Uh, you can go on to visiting museums. Uh, you can have a guest speaker from around the world. We found it's really easy to uh, uh, persuade somebody in a different part of the world to come in as a guest teacher uh, and to give a guest lecture because it's very little uh, energy that they require. There's not the travel or anything like that. And so you have some really wonderful people who can be brought into your child's class. Uh, parents are now in classrooms and often that is a challenge, I know, for teachers. Uh, we hear a lot about helicopter parents. We hear a lot about parents jumping into classes, all of that. Um, I want to start off by saying that treated properly, parents can actually be a very good resource. And, uh, but the importance is treated properly. Now, what this means that uh, we have to first begin by getting parents onto our side, by explaining to them how the learning is going to happen and what they can expect. So yes, we need to draw lines. We need to convey that as educators, we are the experts, but we need to take time to explain and to get them on our side. Let me give you an example of, you know, when you go to a doctor and there is a, a whole series of treatments that are necessary. There are some doctors who will tell you, just do this and they will not explain it to you. And you, you never feel quite comfortable or quite convinced. And we all love the doctor who will understand that this is about us. It's not just the doctor's expertise. And so we take time to, uh, to listen to that doctor, to understand the basis of the treatment, to be able to ask questions. All of these things are there. And once you have parents on your side, you know, uh, it's really nice to have them come in as resource people, to have them do a little bit of the teaching. And parents really feel very, very happy about that. And then, of course, the other obvious opportunity is one, and we're living it now, this whole new world of webinars. We're all on a webinar together, learning together and engaging and listening to each other. So the, the whole sort of resource bank of webinars, again, webinars from around the world, has become something that is really very wonderful. So looking at the way ahead, obviously, the key is going to be infrastructure. And I know that as a country, we are still scrambling. I began by talking about the digital divide. And it is essential as educators, uh, even amongst this audience, we will have people with different levels of infrastructure. A certain amount of it, and I will always say this aloud, and I say this repeatedly, a certain amount of this is in the hands of the government. Uh, it is the government that has to ensure a certain bandwidth uh, because that has become almost as essential as food and as water and as electricity. In addition to that, of course, teachers and schools need to have sufficient devices as parents do. Um, we have to look at, you know, who is, what are the ways of making these more affordable to everybody. Uh, also, as teaching and learning is progressing, we're finding the need for different types of uh, devices. In a family, uh, you find now that you need more than one device if parents are working from home or if there is more than one child. 
So the cost element of it is very important. Uh, for teachers, we need to also be aware of certain devices which support learning. So you get, for instance, things like digital boards, uh, which is a small device. It's not all that expensive. It's everything, anything from about two and a half thousand to six thousand. And this is an invaluable device for particularly for a math teacher or a physics teacher, because you're able to plug that into your computer and write on it uh, like you would write on a notebook and it gets projected on. Now, obviously, uh, we have found that one of the biggest challenges is for teachers of these subjects who need to constantly write. And uh, these sorts of devices really do help. Uh, the other big one, obviously, is teacher training. Uh, I go on celebrating teachers, uh, also recognizing that teachers have spent the summer very willingly on, on, on their own initiative, uh, attending webinars, attending training sessions. Uh, you know, Fiki Rise has been holding these webinars along with an organization called Hire where we've seen that there are a thousand people. Now, this is all of their own volition. And it really speaks to the desire for every teacher to want to be a better teacher. But we need to go on enabling that in a structured way, because this is a whole new world that teachers need to be adequately trained for. And I've spoken about parents. Uh, we need to go on educating the parents because we're in this together. Uh, earlier, schools could sort of shut the gate and parents were outside and they came in at PTMs and, and at report time. Now a parent is there in our school every day. So that parent education aspect really has become very important. Okay, I'm going to stop with that. Thank you. Uh, and let me hand back now to Shubra. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Advani. Um, give me. All right. So, yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Advani. Uh, this has been a, quite an eye opener in many ways, um, how the challenges are now being converted into opportunities of today and how technology is uh, partnering in this entire journey or can partner even further is, is absolutely great to know. And, uh, you know, as a parent myself and uh, also being the sister of a teacher, I know what it means to have parents in the classroom every day. And uh, I understand that it's challenging, but I also believe uh, that this uh, this past progression, this opportunity realization, none of this would have been possible without a collaboration between the parents and the educators, the, the school people and the teachers and the parents. So uh, yes, uh, uh, we are uh, absolutely living in great times uh, is what I believe. So at this point, uh, we will take a small break and uh, reach out to the audience here to get a view of their topic, uh, you know, view of the topic in hand. Uh, when we rolled out the registrations uh, for this webinar, we also had a small survey form and most of you would remember filling it up. The idea of, uh, you know, running that survey uh, primarily was to understand uh, you guys better and obviously also understand what are your struggle areas. Uh, now, from the survey results, uh, it was quite clear that most schools have progressed in terms of, uh, you know, adopt, adapting to the new uh, methods of online education. However, in terms of specific requirements, uh, most schools are still looking for the right laptops or the requisite software. Now, with this, I want to reach out to the audience for a quick poll uh, to drill a little deeper into this topic. And uh, I'm going to be launching the poll now, and it will reflect on your screen. Um, right away. I request the audience to kindly submit their vote. The question here is, what kind of technology intervention would help in facilitating online education? Is it better and customized hardware for students? Is it 
enabling digital simulations and models uh, for engaging? Uh, is it uh, built in technology for better assessment? Tech enabling better online group collaboration? Uh, or is it hardware with inbuilt security features? Because obviously, uh, uh, privacy and security is also uh, something that we needs to be looked into very, very closely. So we'll have the poll open for a little longer. We have about 33, uh, close to 40% who voted. I would request others to also kindly cast their vote going up. Just a couple of seconds more. Wonderful. We're, re we're reaching the 70% mark. Yeah. All right. So I will be ending the poll right here. Uh, I'm sure that the results are also visible to all of you. Uh, very interesting. Uh, it's, it's pretty much, uh, you know, uh, there, is a, there is an equal kind of a weightage that is given to each option, which shows uh, how tech, what diverse role can technology play uh, in this current uh, uh, scheme of things and how technology can just not look at, uh, you know, just uh, the, the ensuring that there are great laptops and you know uh, it's it, uh, its performance but also in terms of how we can add on to engagement assessment uh, security everything so thank you thank you everyone uh, for participating in this poll And at this juncture, as we are talking about technology, I think it's uh, more than appropriate to welcome our next speaker, Mr. Shailendra Katyal, as someone who's front-ending this entire collaboration between technology providers and education sector. I'm sure Shailendra will have lots to cover in terms of how technology can be leveraged in, uh, uh, you know, in making life simpler for teachers as well as students. So over to you, Shailendra. Welcome. Hey, thanks, Shobra. And... Uh... Thanks, Dr. Advani, for setting a very excellent context. You made my job much easier. Uh, and some of what I'm going to cover may be a repeat of what you said. Hopefully, I'm able to provide some fresh uh, perspective. So we don't claim to be experts uh, in this subject. Uh, obviously, uh, the audience that is participating and my co-panelists, uh, you are the leaders in this space. And uh, the only role that we play is as a service provider uh, to the education ecosystem. Uh, what I hope to do is to share our point of view on how we see this space uh, evolve. Uh, before I start sharing my screen, a big uh, vote of thanks. I completely echo what Dr. Advani and Shubhra said earlier. Uh, really appreciate the big role uh, that the teachers have played in this tough times. Um, my wife works for Khan Academy, so I see the effort that she puts in. And I have a teenage uh, daughter just getting into class 9. Uh, so the effort that goes in into keeping the school ecosystem going has truly been uh, quite uh, remarkable. So a vote of thanks again uh, to all the participants here. Shubhra, if you can confirm once you see my screen. Yes, not yet. Has it come up now? No, not yet. Do you want me to share your presentation? Just give me a second again. Yeah. Yes, it's it coming up. Yes, yes, it's there. Okay. Cool. So uh, you heard this from uh, Dr. Advani, uh, but I just wanted to put uh, some numbers to it, right? Because once you see the big picture is where you appreciate uh, how large the issue is. So this is what India is about. It has the largest student pool in the world. Uh, the other two countries, if or even if we put, say, uh, China and US together, uh, the number of people who are learning at any given point of time India is now outpacing them. So that somewhere is the opportunity that we have a very, very young demographic. We are the average age of India is the youngest in the world. And also as a society, uh, we are very highly focused on education. 
uh, we have all grown up with our parents telling us to study as the only passport to success and we are also passing on the same to our children uh, the complexity comes in because it's not a uniform body um, there are multiple tiers uh, of the society in terms of the economic class the types of schools uh, public private urban rural and also the fact that uh, we have a multilingual uh, teaching ecosystem while there's some uniformity which comes in because of english uh, we do have a large vernacular education system also and also then the complexity of uh, multiple uh, boards uh, there are state boards there are central boards there are icsc cbsc some international curriculum coming in so while it looks like a huge uh, uh, mass of people who are willing to learn it's definitely not uh, homogeneous it's very very diverse uh, the second point also uh, came out in dr advani's presentation that uh, there's a big digital divide and even if i don't focus on the divide even if i look at the big private schools or the really well off schools even there the digital maturity is uh, not where uh, maybe some of the mature markets are and we get a view to that because we are a global company so we get to see how things are evolving in uh, other emerging markets uh, or markets like the us so that is a big uh, problem the country is facing uh, that while there is a huge opportunity uh, there is a humongous task to take the digital penetration both in terms of numbers as well as the quality of infrastructure even on this call i saw a lot of messages on chat that the voice quality is not good or the network is not great Uh, and it could be a combination of the device it could be a combination of the network uh, that is available so on the bottom right if i were to take your attention uh, there uh, this part the pc penetration part now all of us have seen that when you only want to consume content a phone or a tablet is good enough but when you actually want to study make projects you definitely need a, a full fledged laptop because you need the keyboard to type Uh, so the pc penetration is uh, where it is it's less than 10% uh, in the country and the problem becomes much larger once you start going into the rural areas uh, the government has woken up to it and very recently post the covid trigger uh, the uh, ministry of human resource development has asked for 60000 crores now to give almost 4 crore laptops uh, and tablets free uh, to uh, deserving students in the next 4 uh, years so the good part is the government has woken up to it and hopefully we'll see far more push uh, on this subject uh, as we speak uh, dr advani also spoke about how this is uh, not just a short term trigger the trigger is uh, maybe uh, because of uh, the the pandemic but i would say it's also an opportunity uh, for long term structural change which was long overdue in the country uh, there was this comment on dumping content all of us grew learning up by rote and for long there has been thing that the indian education system needs an overall uh, which is irrespective of the online offline uh, argument it is more as a system of uh, learning so one is the way of learning has to shift and then the method of delivery has to shift from online to uh, from offline to online or move to a blended model and you have to keep the the little girl uh, the small child in between uh, and you see how how large the problem is that to get the child in a happy state uh, of learning at her own pace there's a huge amount of infrastructure required and about seven or eight nodes of the ecosystem have to move at the same time uh, to make the experience seamless for the kid any part which is broken uh, if none if one of the nodes is not aligned then the experience learning experience for the kid definitely doesn't uh, remain as good so uh, we spoke about quality internet that i am not seeing as a big problem going forward because 4g is now a uh, fairly good across the country uh, barring a few places and 5g is coming in soon so you can visualize a world where initially it was only voice calls then it moved to video and data transfer but some of the solutions that you saw in terms of ar vr uh, it will become a very immersive experience the moment you have 5g coming in and that's not too far away 5g is just maybe a couple of years away in terms of adoption in the country uh, if i look at uh, ed tech companies i think uh, we have some of the biggest ed tech companies now in uh, in india if you look at this part and all of you may be reading about how they are getting a lot of valuation whether it is by juice vedantu topper and we work very closely uh, with a lot of these ed tech companies uh, to give them the hardware solutions that they need uh, government is making a lot of push uh, in terms of making india digital india Uh, so this is also moving in the right direction uh, parents are just about warming up on a new way of learning 
uh, but I'm sure as the push comes from this part, the one that I've colored in yellow, uh, because this is what the audience is today. So I'll go into a little more detail on what schools and teachers can do and how we can come in as a hardware and software provider to help make this uh, shift. Uh, so I'll not claim to be an expert. Uh, this is just some pointers that I would see uh, for, as we observe the school ecosystem and what schools and teachers should be doing. Uh, and uh, Dr. Advani also spoke about this synchronous versus asynchronous learning. Uh, I think uh, it's, it's no longer a debate. And uh, just to give you a parallel, we used to have this debate when uh, for, for selling our products, there was this debate whether people will buy from online, uh, from Amazon Flipkart or will they buy from physical stores? I think the consumers are already ready for a digital world. So it sounds like a fancy word. It basically means that uh, you move very seamlessly uh, between an offline experience and an online experience. And if it has happened in the way we consume content, uh, look at our own uh, time spent on social media, you look at our own time spent on shopping online. I think education is just a question of time that it has to move into this blended world. But what is critical is that it will never be a pure online or a pure offline world. It will be a blended world. Uh, because to repeat what Dr. Advani said, uh, schools are also a, a place for social connections and for the personality development of the child. It can't be done on a screen alone. Uh, finally, it's a human contact which is required. Uh, the second point which I have to make is somewhere it is, it is not, while the trigger is negative, it has happened because of a disease and a pandemic. Uh, it, this change is long overdue. And the more uh, digital actually allows you to do that, the more you can get into personalized learning, customized learning, learn at your own pace uh, versus forcing the entire class to move at the same time. Uh, I think I think more than a problem, it's a great opportunity for uh, uh, schools to leverage the new, new modules. Uh, the third point is also important from how, because schools, while some part are government funded, a large part of the change also has to come from the way private school ecosystems uh, move. And uh, they also are uh, finally commercial enterprises at the end of it. So this is a new way of looking at things that, uh, for example, uh, the school that uh, Dr. Advani represents, can it become a global school out of Noida? Why can't enrollment happen uh, for that school from in Indonesia or the US? Right, and some part could be uh, learning on campus and some part could be learning uh, in a digital digital forum. And this is a thing that we are seeing with a lot of global universities now uh, through models like Coursera and uh, Upgrad, et cetera. You can, you can get a certificate from Kellogg, you can get a certificate from Harvard. So top universities have already started thinking like that, that how do you maximize your reach to people who want to learn uh, not just from the physical campus, but from an uh, online mode. So that, uh, that again, I would see as a big opportunity. But uh, the thinking has to move from investing in a physical infrastructure that you buy acres of land, you build a, a big building. Uh, obviously, that part is required. But how do you also uh, start investing in the digital infrastructure? And that, to my observation in India, I think a lot of schools don't have that mindset today of investing in digital infrastructure, they're still fairly thinking in an offline uh, mode. But to give you a parallel, and this is also from my own company, a lot of companies are moving to work from home. They're letting go of offices, large office spaces are now uh, going empty uh, because work is happening quite efficiently. I have not been to my office for four months, uh, but we are doing a billion dollar plus kind of a business in, in India, right? So beyond the physical movement of goods, a lot of the managerial jobs can definitely happen on a digital way and not from a physical real estate way. I think somebody uh, in the chat window was talking about this needs huge investment. I would not see it as huge investment. It is a redeployment of investment that you move from investing in uh, the brick and mortar world and a physical campus to investing in technology. And actually technology investments are far cheaper at scale compared to, you can't build 10, 15 campuses, uh, but can you get the same reach through digital? Uh, it's far, far easier. Uh, to do that. But obviously investment is required in hardware, software, and also uh, the human resource and training part to teachers. Uh, coming to how Lenovo can help, uh, on the right, what I've put is our vision. Uh, this is smarter technology for all. Um, so as a company, we do believe that technology is a great enabler and it should not be high tech alone. It has to be democratic. Uh, Dr. Advani spoke about innovation, not just happening in big companies, 
but the moment you give access to technology a lot of innovation can happen at a grassroots level and we believe in that which is why this phrase is important for us we believe that technology is becoming smarter and smarter through ar vr ai coming in uh, but it has to be for all it can't be for a select few so how do we make technology affordable and accessible for the larger world is what our company uh, does we are large and the scale has advantages in terms of being able to make the devices more affordable because if you have scale then you can keep bringing down the affordability of of devices uh, we are a rare company which makes everything uh, we have, we make smartphones to super supercomputers very few companies do that in fact one in three com- supercomputers in the world are now powered by lenovo we have motorola as a brand which has smartphones and we are a very significant player in tablets and obviously we are number one in uh, computing uh, so overall uh, very few companies are able to give this range and that's a point of our schools when you are looking at infrastructure whatever you need whether you need it for your physical campus you need it for your teachers or you need it for your students we are able to provide everything as a one stop shop uh i think this point was made that finally it's not it came up in the survey also it's not just about the hardware uh but uh, i think all of us have learned that uh, online doesn't mean learning how to do a video call finally there's classroom assignments how do you manage a class finally you need a, a complete solution to manage the ecosystem and where we have where we have a proprietary uh, classroom management software called land school uh, we have that in the us still not brought into india and we have partnerships with other which we can bring very quickly uh, to to as a solution for uh, your uh, your schools but you have to be worried about everything one is the how do teachers manage a class online how do they give assignments how do they assess regularly and also things like uh, security uh, privacy with kids spending so much time online that becomes a big issue um, and also in terms of uh, security in terms of things getting hacked etc the risk just increases uh, for the ecosystem uh we do have a pipeline of ar vr solutions also dr advani spoke about digital boards uh, there are those fancy ar vr glasses which can give immersive experiences and a lot of that technology is now become a, become affordable so it is no longer things that only rocket scientists can afford uh it can be brought to the masses at uh, at scale and the last point is important uh, because we are not just a big business in this to make money we are committed to the cause of education and we've launched this platform in india about two two months back uh, which is to bridge the divide that a lot of people want to learn but india is uh, at any given point of time there's a huge shortage of quality teachers and our estimate is that the shortage is almost a million teachers at any given point of time between what people want to learn and what uh, teaching is able to uh, provide so we created this platform it is a social initiative it is pro bono uh, from our side and we are asking volunteers to register on the platform both to teach and to learn and just in a couple of months we have i think about 10000 learners and 10000 teachers uh, so would encourage all all of you to also have a look at that platform and see if you can if you want to contribute to the larger learning cause beyond the official duty that you have as a educator i think that's a great platform that will uh, continue to build Uh, just a glimpse on uh, some of the topics which i shared uh, i think dr advani spoke about uh, digital board kind of a thing so this is a laptop with a touch thing because uh, that's your habit as a educator you do need to write and solve problems on the board so there is a touch screen available with a stylus which can be built into a laptop it can be on a tablet and it could also be on a cost effective digital board uh, as as we spoke uh, smarter ed is our pro bono initiative that finding a teacher shouldn't be that hard because a lot of us want to give back to society uh, these are some of the ar vr products that we have and this is the proprietary uh, software that we also uh, bring to the table so with that uh, i'll stop my sharing uh, that was what i wanted to share with the group uh, really happy uh, to have been part of this and uh, happy to take on any questions uh, that the panel or uh, the group may have Uh, uh thank you shailendra i totally agree with the point that this overall transition uh this needs an ecosystem shift and uh, some of which has already happened and some of which is underway and uh, uh, yes uh, this digital uh, world uh, there we are uh, you know combining physical experiences with digital uh, precision this needs a mindset change and uh, overall acceptance i think to the 
become a success. Okay, so uh, with this, we move to the next section of the webinar, uh, the panel discussion. Uh, we will try and address this topic in a well-rounded manner and uh, with inputs from our industry pundits. So at this juncture, I will uh, probably uh, just go behind the curtains and I will now invite Mani, uh, Dr. Advani and uh, Shailindra to kindly switch on their camera and uh, uh, you know, participate in the panel discussion. Thank you. Thank you, Shubhra. It has been, yeah. Uh, thank you, Shubhra. It has been a wonderful session listening to our esteemed panelists. Uh, sharing their experiences about uh, where we are and where we are headed. Uh, without any further stretch of my stay as a moderator, happy to dwell further on this topic and get started with the panel discussion right away. Uh, for the audience, the way we are going to go about this is by asking questions to the panelists. Some of the questions could be curation of what we have received in the QA panel. However, if anything missed, request you to take it up during the Q&A discussion. Uh, over to this, and then we'll start with the first question, and that will be for you, Dr. Edwani. Uh, during this pandemic, uh, we have seen that most of the schools have adopted online classes, yet there is a view that it has also brought about the digital divide, which you also touched in your presentation, in terms of students who are adept with new tools and technologies and students who need handholding in this direction. So how do you think should the schools go by managing, uh, balancing this and ensuring learning for all the kids? So one thing is uh, there are two types of divisions. Uh, I'm not going to address the division, which is a huge economic divide where children don't have devices. That's very real, but that's not what I'm going to talk about. But even in a classroom where, where children have access to, to devices, there is a huge divide. Uh, there are children, you know, who may have played games online, but they're not necessarily comfortable with the learning management system with some of the tools I talked about earlier. And I think it's uh, centrally important for schools to ensure a comfort level with this whole territory of online learning. Uh, it's a bit like, you know, going to, a, when you go to a new country, uh, you don't just get onto the flight and land somewhere and expect to be able to function. Yeah, we know that uh, you have to work out how that currency is working. You have to work out how public transport or shops and all are working. Similarly, this is a new country and it's essential to get it right. It, it's important for schools to take time to teach children. Uh, you know, there are so many YouTube videos. I'd say that the more able children should act as buddies for the less able children. Uh, we should check before we launch into teaching and learning at the beginning of the year, check, is everybody comfortable with the management system? This is an emotional need because if a child is struggling with the basic uh, management of how they are to learn, they're not going to be able to learn. So it's important to spend some time on that. Okay. Uh, thank you very much uh, for those inputs, ma'am. Uh, my next question will be for you, Shailendra. Uh, when we say education and digital in one line, what are your thoughts considering the transformation this education sector uh, has witnessed going to the pandemic? I mean, how do you think the combination of education and tech domain has really fared in the test of time? Yeah, so if the question is specific to uh, maybe the last two, three months, I think it has been a challenge. It's, it's not been easy on either side, either uh, from the educator side or the school side or uh, uh, even the, the the student side. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I see my daughter going into panic when she is told that, okay, now there's an exam, online exam. You have to write with a black pen. You have to download a scanner. Uh, even if you're off for one minute, you'll lose the entire, uh, uh, because then there's a suspicion that you've logged off. Uh, to cheat. So they are going to the, through that uncertainty and uh, I think it will take time. We've all read that suddenly there's this issue of how much screen time, how is it going to affect the mental health, the eyes. Um, so it will take time to evolve. Uh, do I see people becoming more comfortable? They are. And the fact that uh, we talk to schools uh, as a service provider, uh, we also see that most people are seeing it as a long-term thing. Uh, because of some of the topics which I said. It's not just because of uh, 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 a COVID scare, but if you are able to give your learning access to a lot more students in a, in a, at their own pace, 
because that's always been the holy grail how do you develop an individual child to their maximum potential and that is where we think uh, digital can play a big role uh, but it's, it's a long haul it's, it's not a easy thing as of now we've just about got used to doing a webinar doing some video calling yeah but yeah. Uh, developing the whole ecosystem comfort from the parent side the student side and uh, from the teacher side i think uh, still still some way to go completely agree and couldn't have agreed anything less on this uh, my next question is actually since we're talking about the education and the technology world my next question is and which we actually asked to a lot of our uh, respondents also during the survey and we had uh, during a registration process we had 76% of respondents saying that they're looking forward to technology to address a better schooling experience and student assessments uh, which means that you're talking about both technology and education coming together uh, which is all this whole webinar is also about so what will be your thoughts and suggestions on the kind of model uh, which both the sectors should look at in order to have a scalable template for digitized future i know uh, some bit have been addressed in your respective presentations but would love to have uh, views from both of you uh, on this well let me begin with the specifics and then you know shailendra can take it up um particularly the one about assessments because i think that is what a lot of teachers struggle with one of the things we have to get our head around is that just as uh, education the transmission of education is changing so too assessment must there is no point in trying to still think about only pen and paper assessments which you're then uploading uh, the focus of assessment must be what assessment is always intended to be and we have moved away from because we think about assessment as exams assessment is much more than exams uh, it must be about focusing on what students can do and so you know uh, look at them explaining on a video or creating a podcast of explanation or a uh, flip grid or something like that where they can talk or create a model ask children about their feedback on the assessments that are being given and look to see how you can implement those look at raising uh, different levels of complexity uh, because after all assessment is recall and there are ways that you can do that but it must also be about application and the whole purpose of education is that children should be able to apply their learning so assessment is able to in some ways much more easily in the online format is able to apply itself to that we just need to create the mindsets in educators yep thank you uh, shailendra your views also please on this yeah so completely echo what dr advani said and maybe a couple of more points um, so you only look at uh, technology as an enabler i think the whole access part of it right earlier there was this thing about there's only one good teacher available and the access to that teacher will be in a certain school in a certain uh, classroom but if sup suppose we were to break that barrier and that teacher can uh, teach a much larger portion of the world uh, which is what it should be right mm -hmm. that you give quality access at scale uh, the second is more from uh, assessment as exam versus assessment of capability and where you've reached, uh, reached in terms of uh, learning or mastering any subject uh, so how do you enable that uh, learning at your own pace and ensuring that it's, it's then a thing that resides in your mind and it's not just about a be exam ho gaya marks mil gaye and you forget the topic Uh, i think that's where uh, technology can play a big role but um, i think to question again how do we make it fun for the child if you remember the picture at the middle small little girl and there yeah. are like, eight people trying to make her learn how do you how do you make it fun for her because learning should be fun and it should have a lifelong impact and some of the words that i hear more from uh, my wife's work at khan academy growth mindset mastery based learning so we pick we pick one topic and keep learning it's not time bound you may take longer than other people but fine because you are an individual and there should not be any artificial barrier to learning so i think okay. these are some of the ecosystem shifts which have to happen uh, i don't think the indian overall education system is geared up for this because there's still a cbsc icsc ncert way of doing things yeah, but the world is boards, yes. yeah but the world is moving on the world is moving on to more 
more asynchronous and mastery based learning and uh, i think that's the big opportunity that technology provides it can't be done in a physical world where you have to take the entire class together at the at the same time thank you thank you very much shilil these are really important inputs and very wonderful inputs which we hear from both of you uh with this i would like to conclude uh, the panel discussion and i'm sure that uh, there are many more questions which the audience would like to ask here uh, and uh, move over to the q and a session uh but the way we're going to go about this is that you can raise your hands uh, and we can either unmute you or you could also put up your questions into the q and a section so uh money uh, there have been certain questions that have already been posted and uh, i think uh, we can take one question which has uh, uh, come from dr heena sanghani where she uh, she's asking how can we justify assessment and evaluation through digital classroom i think uh, dr adwani would perhaps be uh, have some views on that well it's a question of how we define assessment isn't it Uh, what is the purpose of assessment assessment has to be uh, first of all not something that happens only at the end of learning uh, where you know it's like uh, weighing yourself to see okay have i put on 2 kilos or not uh, it's a ongoing process which gives you feedback which enables better learning so first of all you know that is uh, should be the purpose of assessment really it is only at the end of class 12 that you need to weigh because then you get on to the next stage of where you are uh, otherwise the purpose of assessment must be to go on enhancing learning so in this digital era uh, what it has really done is i think transformed the possibility of types of assessment uh, it has given many many opportunities Shailendra was talking absolutely or made this really important point about it's all about learning it's about the mastery of learning and uh, there's been you know for, uh, an instance of look at the way learning happens when we play video games yeah for those of you who've done it uh, or or online games you fail once and then you try again and you try again and you get better each time so the assessment that failing once is not an end result in itself it spurs us to learn better to improve more and really education should have that it's got a lot to learn from online games uh, as far as assessment goes uh, assessment should be enabling it shouldn't be a label thank you dr advani uh, we have a hand raised from uh... Preeti Mahajan, uh, Preeti, I am uh, requesting you to kindly unmute yourself and ask the question. Um, Preeti, are you there? Or we'll move on to the next uh, question. Okay, so. Uh, next is Sanjeev Jha. Uh, Sanjeev uh, are you there All right there are some questions uh, that have people have again uh, as i mentioned posted uh, on the panel and one second um yeah uh hepsi uh, has asked if how the how digital learning will be possible in the remote villages in india where there is poor internet facility and i think shailendra echoed that part in his presentation where he was talking about infrastructure being key in this scenario so uh, is there anything more that uh, either of you would like to add over here well one of the things that is often been talked about i don't think it's an ideal solution but it is there and it is used uh, it's been used in australia and the outback for instance for a very long time which is that you have certain master teachers who are able to at least guide the local teacher and they do this in various ways using uh, various types of technology uh, 
telephones, etc. Uh, so, so you have like a hub person who is able to, in, uh, in a long distance way, be able to engage with the people in the local area. So that's just an add-on, but yeah, the, there is a significant challenge. Of course there is. Yes. Uh, we have another question. Of, yeah, yeah sorry, Mani, please go ahead. Yeah, there was just one question, I think, which will be relevant for Shelitra. Uh, someone has asked that, you know, do you have any teacher-specific computers? And uh, is there uh, some research or collaboration which is happening in terms of checking on the screen time and how can technology support in that area? Yeah, so the answer to both is not a firm yes as of now. Do we have customized something for a teacher use? No, but uh, we can always recommend, like I said, if it's a touch device with a stylus, it does become easier for a teacher to use. And not all laptops will have touch. It does add about five, 6,000 rupees to the cost. But once you have it and you learn to, to use it, it's fairly intuitive. And we've seen good feedback come on some of those devices. I still haven't uh, seen what uh, Dr. Advani was talking about, but maybe that's something to look at as well. If there are cost-effective touch boards which are available for teachers to scribble on, I think that could be one thing to look at. On the screen timing thing, uh, uh, it's a good one. In fact, I was try trying to take uh, a picture of some of the interesting questions and maybe I'll come back to you, Mani, and you can share with the panel, uh, the audience. Later. But uh, I think the pointer to look at is, is does is the screen anti-glare at a very basic level? Because some mm -hmm. products don't have anti-glare as a feature. And over time, we've all tried to make the device thinner and lighter, right? Because people wanted to take the laptop outside. It was for mobility. But now it is at home use. And with your kids spending maybe three, four, five hours, you would want a larger screen. So as long as these two things you are taking care of, which is uh, it's a large enough screen, not too bright, and it has an anti-glare feature. I think that uh, should address a short-term problem, but uh, I will take up uh, this this question internally also to figure out if you have any research which tells how much is the optimal screen time. Thank you. Thank you very much, Charit. Over to you, Shubra, now. Yes, thank you. Uh, I think there are plenty of more questions and a uh, couple of more hand raises. Unfortunately, we have already overshot the time. And uh, I'm sure, uh, you know, we will have more opportunity to take forward this discussion. Um, thank you, everyone, for your time today. I really thank the panelists. Uh, and very importantly, the people who took out time to sit here, listen to uh, uh, the wonderful people, uh, the very, very learned panelists. Uh, and uh, it, was, it was one hour totally, totally well spent. Um, uh, Dr. Advani, from your p presentation, I think my key takeaway has been, uh, you know, uh, uh, the fact that you spoke about how learning is now uh, moving from this teacher-centered uh, and uh, course-centered uh, uh, methodology to a more collaborative uh, effort and how teachers are right now becoming more important than ever. So, um, uh, yes, as a parent myself, I, I totally resonate with that fact. And uh, I think I have a call every day with one of the teachers saying, thank you so much. You're doing a wonderful job. Uh, and... Uh, Shailendra, uh, yes, uh, you know, you, uh, very, 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 very valid point in terms of, yes, there is a huge opportunity, but there's lots of work pending to uh, encash that opportunity in terms of infrastructure, in terms of getting everything uh, in place. And even if the entire curriculum needs a change to make this most, most effective. Yes, we've made a start. And I think we have made a wonderful start. Um, uh, and we are really uh, progressing fast in this. So, um, yeah, uh, great discussion. Uh, to the audience, uh, we encourage you to share your feedback, suggestions, anything with us uh, on webinar at denave.com. The ID is webinar at denave.com. We are all ears on this ID. Uh, this webinar is being live telecasted on Facebook. Uh, and we will also upload this on our YouTube channel very, very shortly. Uh, you can access it anytime on Denave's Facebook page, as well as uh, in, shortly on our YouTube channel as well. Once again, thank you for being such a great audience. Stay home. Stay safe and have a wonderful weekend, all of you. Thank you. Thank you very thank much. Thank you, Dr. Dwani. Thank you, Shelly, very much for your time. Thank you, everyone. And thank you to all. Bye. Thank you.